Start here with uh, Dylan from Toronto. Do you see Pac as a future AEW world champion? If we follow your booking idea and Hangman Page eventually takes the title from Kenny Omega, maybe Pac then takes it off of Hangman. You talk about certain people as being the future of AEW, but where does Pac fit into all of that? I think he fits in there uh, just as much as, as anybody else does. A lot of it, I think, will depend on the travel situation. The fact that he's back, obviously he was able to come here. But I don't know where he's, you know, does he still take up residence there? Does he want to go back home? I don't know what his plans are. It depends on that, number one. Uh, but number two, yeah, absolutely. I think Pac is, is a big part or should be a big part of the future plans in AEW. Do I see him or, or can I see him one day as being the AEW world champion? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Now, he's got that he's got that character down to a science. May he comes out there and he's pissed off of the world. And yeah, he may not physically be the biggest guy in the world, but he's ripped to shreds and he can go in there and hang with just about anybody, no matter how big or small they are. He's a great wrestler. He's great at what he does. So as far as I'm concerned, he, he can be as much a world champion as anybody else in that company. He's in a position right now where he's more, I think, in a position where he's more well-prepared to be the champion than some of the guys who I eventually see uh, maybe holding on to that title, like like a Darby Allen or somebody like that. Uh, Pac, Pac is ready right now. I just don't know that that fits into the story, though. I think it should go to Omega, from Omega then to Hangman. And that, I'm talking like long-term. I'm, I'm planning this out like a year out. So I don't think there's any world title in Pac's future in, in the near term. But yeah, absolutely, I could see him as being the champion, and I would have nothing against it. I'm not going to hold his size against him. Absolutely, he could be a world champion. And Luz Cannon Lopez, my good buddy John Luz Cannon Lopez, he sent in a question. John has a spinoff of the buy or sell segment for me. He's calling it Keep, Borrow, Cherish, and Sell on the best WWE pay-per-view show from Madison Square Garden of these four choices. SummerSlam 1991, WrestleMania 10, Survivor Series 1996, and Royal Rumble 2000. Hmm, so leaving, leaving Survivor Series 2002 off this list, that's going to piss some people off. So he, he says it's keep borrow cherish and sell shouldn't it be keep and then cherish and then borrow and then sell we're gonna do it that way i think that that's how we'll do this i like survivor series 96 okay I, it's one of those rare shows that i don't think i liked it as much the first time i saw it as i do now you know sometimes you hear like oh that didn't age well like i really liked it but now i go back and i watch it and it's, it's not as good this is like the inverse where I, I remember not really being all that enamored with this pay-per-view when I watched it live in 96. But as I've gone back and I've watched it more recently, uh, I, I think I've gained a newfound appreciation for it. I think I like it more now you know, than I did 24 years ago, the first time I saw it. And really, it's entirely for two matches. The first meeting between... And I know The Rock made his debut on that show, but it's really for two matches. The first meeting between Bret Hart and Steve Austin, which was excellent. And the main event with Psycho Sid winning the WWF Championship from Shawn Michaels. That was the best match of Sid's career. Find me a better Sid match. I don't think he ever had a better match than he had with Shawn Michaels in the Garden that night. And the crowd definitely played a part in that. You know, it was just a it was like a big fight atmosphere. People loved Sid. When Sid came back in the summer of 96, I don't know what it was, because he had already been with the company two other times. Now maybe it was just the fact that it was he was a heel both of those times and now he was a babyface. But man, this guy was just he was over like gangbusters when he came back in 96 when the warrior got fired, they brought Sid in. And, you know, it was going to be Sean and Vader at Survivor Series. And then that plan went away. And it was Sid who took his place. And he got over. And the people in the garden that night, they hated Shawn Michaels. But they loved Psycho Sid. Even though Psycho Sid, he tried to kill an old man. He, he hit Jose Lothario in the chest with a TV camera. And they were 
portraying it like he was having a heart attack, the crowd didn't seem to care. <laughs> New Yorkers did not seem to give a damn about poor Jose Lothario writhing on the ground, dying. But they loved the fact that Sid won the championship. But of the choices you've given me, I have to sell. I have to sell. You got to make sacrifices here. I got to sell on this one. SummerSlam 1991 is one of my favorite SummerSlams ever. The match made in heaven, the match made in hell. I love how Bobby Heenan confused the two and he thought the wedding was the match made in hell. Bret Hart winning the Intercontinental title from Mr. Perfect is a classic, and that's not even the best of, of the pay-per-view matches that they had. I thought their match at the King of the Ring in 93 was better. But that it's just a classic match. The place popped huge for Virgil winning the Million Dollar title from Ted DiBiase. I loved, 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 loved the jailhouse stuff with the Mountie and the Big Boss Men and those segments. I loved it. I loved it. I remember that as a kid. I watch them back now. They're every bit as entertaining now. <laughs> when he loses the match and they have to cuff him and take him down to the pokey. Oh, that's great. And also, LOD beat the Nasty Boys to win the tag team titles on that show. It wasn't much of a match, but it was, it was history. It was a historic moment, seeing them win the championships for the first time. I've got to just borrow, though. I've got to borrow on this one. Because these next two are the two best garden pay-per-views that this company has ever done. I'm going to cherish the 2000 Royal Rumble. I've always loved the look of that show with the giant taxi cab above the little short, you know, the, the short entranceway, which sadly is no longer there. The Taz debut opening the show against Kurt Angle was masterful, which was the exact opposite of how they handled the rest of his run. The tables match with the Hardys and the Dudleys is a forgotten gem. The Rumble match, even the Royal Rumble match itself, I thought was good. But what really makes this show is the street fight for the championship between Triple H and Cactus Jack. It was the match, for me anyway, it was the match that made Triple H. It made me buy into Triple H as a believable main event level performer. Not the match with Vince McMahon, not the matches he had with Stone Cold in the fall. It was this. It was this street fight that really sold me on Triple H in that spot. So I love that show. But I will cherish that one. I will keep the best pay-per-view, WWE pay-per-view in Madison Square Garden history, which is WrestleMania 10. And it was entirely a two-match show. The greatest, but see, the thing is, though, you could say, like, wasn't there more to like about the Rumble in 2000 or, again, even Survivor Series 02, which wasn't on this list. Some people might say SummerSlam 98, which I think is overrated. What does everybody think of when they think of SummerSlam 98? What's the first thing they think of? They think of the ladder match between Triple H and The Rock. Right, because that's really the only great thing about that show. Austin and Undertaker, that wasn't a great match. I didn't think it was a great match. They've had better. Jeff Jarrett got a haircut, right? When he lost to uh, X-Pac. What else is so memorable about that show? But WrestleMania 10, the two big matches, I mean, these are two of the best matches in company history. You can't find, I mean, two matches like this on the same show. How does this not end up in the number one spot? The greatest opener in WrestleMania history with the brothers facing off, right? Brett versus Owen. And the latter match between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. So that one I would keep. So I hope that answers your question. A little bit of a different take on the buy or sell this week.